Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and I hope you'll join me for a quick tour of my gardens and greenhouses. Just for background, we're located about an hour east of Vancouver on Canada's west coast, Zone 8 USDA. And it is early May, so that puts us firmly into the early spring season, not quite into bloom season for the roses, but I hope we have some interesting stuff for you anyway. We built this split rail fence to feature some of the climbers and rambling roses. And the plan is to train them low upon the fence. But what it also created was these spots where I could put perennial gardens. And I've started to fill those up now. I'll take you for a quick look at them. Over here on the left, I have columbine, which is a volunteer, just popping up. And then to the right of that, I have a, uh, that, I think that's a heucarella. And this beauty here, if I forget the name of a plant as I'm going, I'll fill it in later a relative of snowdrop and then of course a beautiful hosta there and behind it is globe flower orange globe flower i have it in bloom elsewhere so i'll bring you over there but in the meantime have a look at this beauty that's a pulmonary i'll get a close-up view of the leaves so you can see the dots on it but it's a gorgeous pink color the cult of our name is shrimp on the barbie and speaking of that globe flower, Trollius, here it is. And of course the yellow ones are nice too and much more common, <clears throat> but to me they look too much like a buttercup. So I like the orange one and that's what this is. And this of course highlights the purpose of the fence that I've trained in this case, New Dawn to uh, cover it and you can see this one is starting to see some flower buds come onto it but I have some other ones on the other side that are almost in full bloom now. Of course I don't mind having the mountain landscape in the background it sort of keeps the eyes up and looking too closely at the weeds. This uh, post here I did a video last year on training pillar roses. I put up six of these posts along these fences here. So, and you can see I've got a, a rose ready to climb it. Here I have a tree peony. It's starting to put on some size and actually even some big fat blooms on it. So I'm excited about that. And down low, I just have some ground covers, but this one here with the white and green and variegated leaves with a bit of pink on the edges, that's a Lysimachia alexander, which will later be covered with bright yellow flowers. Now this is what I mean by how I'm training my roses along the fence. And if you get a good look at this one, you can see that it's coming into bud heavily now. This is Heaven's Eye, which I think is a Geshwind rose, and it's just about to cover this fence with blooms, which is exactly what I intended it to do. Buff Beauty over here. I see them starting to bud. And of course behind there is the rose field. That's where I keep my stock plants for, for growing roses. And we just changed that over a year now and so finally I'm starting to see some some uh, some strength on the growth of those roses so I'm excited about that because I intend to pl propagate many thousands this year. Here's Geshwin's Orden Rose also a rambler on the fence and then you'll also see all these purple flowers in front of it that's Lunaria which is also called money plant. And these early flowers in here are great at attracting hoverflies and other beneficial insects into the garden to fight off the early influx of aphids. And later on in the season, if I leave these standing, they will have these little round seed pods on them uh, that become almost translucent and quite pretty themselves. Here's the beginnings of the rose garden, this big archway I built in a previous video. I've just got the roses 
on it now that should be covering it over the next couple of years and starting to see some strong growth on there. One of my favorite roses on the right here, that's Robert Le Diable, a centifolia, and it's put on a lot of big growth this year, so I'm excited to see what kind of flowers it puts on. The centerpiece of the rose garden is this big tree here, and that's a red horse chestnut, uh, Aeschylus expavia, I think, uh, or carnea. And you can see it's starting to have some flowers right now, although pretty soon that will be very, very impressive. Around the outside of the rose garden here, some things are a little slower to come into leaf. It is still early spring yet. Cardinal de Richelieu. Charles de Mills. <laughs> a little higher than I was expecting. It's probably almost up to six feet now on average. So that's going to be a neat one. I try to use every square inch of the garden, even the property margins here, because I have so many roses and so many plants that I want to grow. So this one is a magnolia that I put in a couple of years ago. This giant, Darlus Enigma, is up to about, oh, I'm going to say 10 feet now, but it's going to cover itself with white blooms all the way from the beginning of the season and will keep on going in small flushes all the way through the season. It is the most prolific bloomer I've ever seen. And here beside the house, I have my blueberry shrubs fully in bloom, ready to set fruit. And behind those, some Saskatoon berries. And here beside the play set is a laburnum. And you won't probably be able to see it at this point, but the laburnum is just starting to form its little flowers. Young tree, but I'm excited about getting larger in the yard. And right beside the play set as well, we have the spot that we call the children's garden. Make sure this comes into focus. And it's filled with fun and interesting plants. A giant allium. This is the Globemaster allium which will come up in big purple balls very shortly. And tiger eye sumac, which looks funky and kind of Dr. Seuss type plant. And just to the right of that, I have some tree roses. In this case, backed up by uh, Caria japonica which is that yellow shrub there. This is the winter garden, and I've done a tour of the winter garden separately before, so I won't show it off in any great detail, but it's the place where I try to accumulate the plants that show off their best in the winter, either because of their bark or their bloom colors, uh, just uh, do their best show in the winter. And then most of them are just coming out of their showy period, so I won't spend too much time here. But as mentioned last week, I'll be cutting back all of those willows to make for more colorful stem color for next year. Lots and lots of hellebores in this garden. And this is a viburnum, and I think that this is viburnum Marisei. It was here before I got here. But it does do that, uh, that layering thing uh, of flowers. Deep underneath ancient plum trees here, I have a wild kind of garden, uh, woodland, that I'm trying to establish some hydrangeas. See, this one was transplanted last year, so you still see a lot of ugly bare stems on there. Some Brunnera, 
that's that ground cover down there with the heart-shaped leaves. That's a Brunner Jack Frost and the sort of forget-me-not type flowers. Uh, it's going to take a little bit while to make this area look a little more impressive, but hey, we're going to give it a try. Lots of hydrangeas going in here and a big, big hosta. This one is Empress Wu. We divided it last year, so we split it into a clump over here and then a clump over here. And then finally, another clump right over here. I can see some people starting to scream about the Centauria behind there that is supposed to be a terrible invasive. And I do find that in my cool clay soil and then later dry conditions, that a lot of the things that you would find invasive in your garden that are fairly well behaved in mine. So just case in point that these things are situational. Along the front fence line here, that's Epimedium down low there with its bronzy type foliage. And in this case, it's I think Sulfurium, so it's yellow flowers. And then we have a lot of Hellebores, which these feel like they've been in color for weeks, if not months. And uh, they just keep on putting up, or those Bracts hold on there forever. So uh, they were certainly showier earlier on, but still not too unattractive. Of course, Dicentra spectabilis. Over here, another patch of that epimedium. And then over here is, I think, Potophyllum, which I'm kind of excited about, Mayapple. I have a couple of mature crab apple trees up and over here, also in the woodland area of my garden. And this one here, I'm trying to tame down. We had a lot of bindweed over here. So we pulled it, we've covered it with soil or with chips, and we're trying to have a go at keeping it bindweed free this time of year. The big black thing you see at the back here with the dark foliage is elderberry, uh, black, black leaved elderberry. It has that sort of finely divided foliage and it's about to come into flower too. So it's gorgeous. When we cut down some trees in the yard, we lined this garden with just these little rounds. And I threw some of my favorite plants in there. You can see down at the very bottom there, all those purple shoots. That's uh, Clematis Sirius Black. These flowering things are cramby at the front. Again, another early season mustard to get the beneficials into the garden. I showed a pruning demonstration on this one a little bit earlier on in the year. That's Rose de Rest. And of course, a fig tree over here, which I'm sure I can find a little fig or two somewhere along here. This one is going to be an Italian nut pine when it grows up. And I wanted to show you this guy here. It kind of goes into bloom before it even puts on its leaves, although it's doing both now. This is Circus occidentalis, a shrubby version of a street tree that people see around. Fits nicely in the garden. And then over here, well, again, some more of that cramby, but Jupiter's beard coming up in a big amount, which I don't mind. You know, again, I'm, I don't mind some of the more vigorous spreaders in the garden. They make a nice, a nice clean spring look. Uh, pink red flowers, not too far away. This patch over here, I have some more of that that Brunnera with the heart-shaped leaves and the forget-me-not flowers, but then over to the right here, I have some of the native Dicentra. Here in the greenhouse, did a little less propagation this year, just because it's been a very busy year at work but this is spring potting of 
roses here. All starting to put on their legs. These ones have been pulled for customer orders already. We did a pickup yesterday and we have some more pickups coming later on in the week. Whoops, don't want to miss seeing some flowers in bloom. They do, they are a little ahead in the greenhouse as opposed to outdoors where you see where they're just budding right now. And that's an early variety anyway, that's my gold. The perennials, as I say, did a little less propagation this year just because of how busy it's been down at work, but I'm gonna to try to fix that soon. That's uh, Purple Rain Jacob's Ladder. One more greenhouse. This is our rose greenhouse. And it was full, full, full of plants recently, but we've started to sell through in a big way. So I'm excited by that. Again, because these are indoors, you can see they are being covered with buds and the odd and occasional flower as well. I was asked in a previous video about these trees at the back of the greenhouse. Those are peach trees. Our climate is not quite warm enough through the majority of the summer season to give heat outdoors enough to produce peaches. And Lisa wanted peaches fresh. And so we put them in the greenhouse here and they've been <laughs> extremely productive. Uh, more peaches than we could eat last year. This is Nicomen Island. Mostly what you see growing here is blueberries. There's a few dairy farms as well. And uh, please excuse my refuse piles along the bottom here, but I think the view is quite nice. And finally, the rose field, this time with the rose garden and that split rail fence in the background. And as mentioned, this was all moved last year. Most of these were transplanted, which was a massive job. I did some of it by hand and some of it I had to do with the big backhoe. And finally, I'm seeing lots and lots of growth on the plants. And something I tried to do while I was going through it here, I'm sorry, I'm just learning how to use this camera equipment because I wanted to make it more steady, is I tried to make sure that everything that we put into the ground got itself a plant tag straight away. And that way when I'm propagating plants, I'm not having to refer to anything, not having to try to remember. I can just take notes right at the time. This is a Bay de Cluny, gorgeous foliage on that. And there's some, some dieback I haven't taken off of these roses, but that's okay. I'll get to it when the season calms down a little bit. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for a tour of the farm in early spring. Not too much color to see here. I hope you weren't too distracted by my wobbly cameramanship. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below the video.